8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top Allumage Vulcain, allumage des EAP décollage. La propulsion est nominale. And we are off. How wonderful to see the mighty Ariane roaring across that equatorial sky. Definitely launched a saver. We are now over one minute into the flight as she powers her way into space, heading east out over the Atlantic Ocean. Raphael Mathieu, her reaction. It's hard to get tired of it, right? <laughs> it's I mean, amazing. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, I might be an engineer, but still, I, I have emotions when I see that. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's amazing. Like a ball of fire thrusting oh, yeah. itself. No, it? and, and we are extremely Look lucky because uh, we can clearly see uh, the, the rocket like blasting its, its way towards Raphael, space. what do you have to tell us? Well, I mean, everything is going to happen quite quick, quickly now. Uh, you'll have uh, in... Uh, few seconds the booster separations that's the uh, first thing have, we have to look out for yeah they will have provided 90 percent of the overall thrust in order to literally escape the gravity pull of the earth and with a clear sky we could we'll see them well i hope so i think we will and then you will have the separation of the fairing when we have crossed the limits of the atmosphere it's protected the satellite from the friction of the air but also from the noise uh, generated at the booster's ignition and then we will have the separation of the main cry cryogenic stage. And here, oh, here you can we can see and the yes. booster separation. Yeah, and this we see it so clearly. We see it so it's confirmed clearly. visually <laughs> and also in our... By the DDO. By the DDO. Brilliant. And OK, so the sky is perfectly clear. So it's perfect conditions to, to So, um, Mathieu, without these two boosters, the launcher is obviously now a lot lighter so, um, than it was at takeoff. Its load has been lightened uh, by how many tons, and why is this necessary, well, even it, essential? Does lighter mean faster? Yeah, yeah, it was 775 tons on the launch pad. Ah. Now, now it's about 156 tons because we got rid of, of these empty boosters. Uh, ima imagine that we managed to, uh, to get rid of about 500 tons of propellant in about two, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds. But this is uh, the amount of energy that you need. Uh, to, to go to space. And, uh, and this is a principle, you get rid of any useless mass to, to provide maximum acceleration to the satellites. And now we've got fairing separation. The fairing separation. And we actually can see it. So we have, yes, again, we visually the and confirmation wow. and the also confirmation, by the DDO. That's brilliant we, news. We, we can actually see the two halves of, of the fairing getting separated. That's uh, magical. Those wow. images <laughs> are incredible. And this is the last time, by the way, we see the piece of art that was on the fairing. Bye bye. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Raphael. As you can see on the screen, computers are generating now perhaps CGI images for us to see what's happening. It will be coming up in a minute. We have five minutes, not now, because obviously the skies are so clear, we're seeing everything. We have five minutes now before our next milestone stone. So let's focus on our launch at Ariane 5. Mathieu, I'm turning to you. Could we come back to the particularities of this heavy launcher? It is, it is the reference in space transportation. Yes. Uh, internally, we call it uh, the legend. The legend. <laughs> the, the, living, the living legend. The, the living legend. I mean, I mean, for most of the engineers of, uh, of my generation, somehow we grew up uh, with this uh, launcher. And personally, it, it directly inspired uh, my, my career and, uh, wow. and my inspiration to, uh, to, to, to go to space. But think about some of the missions it allowed. Uh, one in particular, uh, in 2004, the launch of uh, Rosetta. And that's how, for the first time, we managed to land La a probe on a comet. So that's the, uh, what it's able to do. Or we service the, uh, uh, the space station five times with the automated transfer vehicle again. I mean, 
Ariane is uh, almost a member of any of the uh, of our European families. And actually, uh, <laughs> Raphael uh, spent Christmas with uh, Ariane, right? <laughs> yeah, it was last year. Yes, I was lucky enough to be in French Guiana, and, and that was uh, obviously a very, very emotional launch. Uh, it's very hard to describe the tension it was before the launch. Hard to describe also breath. the tension yeah. released after the, we got the confirmation of the separation of the satellite. And we witnessed the deployment of the solar that panel must have been incredible. in real time. It was really amazing. And it's also, I have to say, very hard to describe the admiration that I have for my colleagues, RN Space, Obviously. RN Group, and all the teams that were involved in this launch that made history for RN5, I think. Well, of course, tonight, Ariane 5 has three very special, special passengers on board. MTGI-1, the first imaging satellite of the Meteosat third generation program. And of course, Galaxy 35 and 36, two communication satellites built by Maxar in California. Mathieu, what is the maximum number of satellites that Ariane 5 can carry? I've seen one, two... Yes, um, a, a, a typical mission for uh, for N5 would be uh, what we call a, a dual launch. And actually, the SILDA means uh, uh, dual launch system in in, in French. Um, but uh, tonight we have uh, three payloads because uh, we are really uh, uh, capable of adapting uh, this launcher to uh, to any needs. Uh, if you remember, too, uh, we were able to deploy four Galileo satellites uh, when necessary uh, on, on RN5. So that's really uh, the philosophy I, I described, adapting yeah. the launcher to the customer's needs. And with RN6, we will have even more flexibility and uh, versatility because uh, there are some dedicated structures that are being developed under the fairing, for example, in order to accommodate uh, small satellites. It's called the multi-launch service. We have dedicated carrying structures to deploy many satellites of a single constellation at a time in a single flight. Uh, so yeah, uh, we gain lots of flexibility with, uh, with RN6. A lot of things to come, yeah, we're looking forward to that. that. Well, thanks for all those interesting souvenirs and fun facts. The next important step will be to the cutoff of the main core stage, the extinction and the ignition of the upper stage. Yeah. Yeah, the ignition of the upper stage is absolutely key for the rest of the mission, and it's always a bit tricky to actually ignite a uh, liquid stage uh, in the emptiness I, of I space. I imagine. Yeah. Yes, we're going to go through a, 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 a series of, uh, of events, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's really going uh, really fast. Uh, first, of course, uh, the cutting off of the main stage uh, that's propelled by the Vulcan 2.2 uh, 2 engine, 2.1 is for RN6, sorry. La uh, nominal, the le separation, calme. yeah, the, and everything's nominal. Mm. As a separation of uh, the upper stage from, uh, from de the la stage. Par la station Natal au Brésil. Yes, ah. and, and, and then the ignition of the stage. And as you said, it's, uh, te techni it, technically it's very challenging. It's not like igniting a cryotechnic stage on the ground. You have to do it in space uh, with mm. very, very particular uh, thermal uh, conditions. And of course, you're in zero G, so your uh, propellant might go everywhere. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mathieu. Now we're waiting for Tamara Tezele, the Range Operations Director, to confirm the next important steps of the mission. So we have... A propulsion is nominal. So that's an important information. Everything is going nominal. Well, that like the trajectory is, is, is very nominal. Important. And the launcher is behaving like it was planned. Behaving well. So 